At the moment, I'm in the forested area at UBC Farm on the UBC campus, and I'm in the very dry maritime subzone of the coastal western hemlock zone. So don't let the, the words very dry fool you, because remember the subzone is just giving you context in relation to the zone. So of the coastal, the whole range of the coastal western hemlock zone, we're on the very dry end of that. But this is in fact a very wet area. This is uh, actually a, a temperate rainforest. The coastal western hemlock zone is a temperate rainforest. We get very high precipitation and it has very mild temperatures being a maritime coastal zone. So that means there's a very long growing season. And this is actually one of the most productive forest types on earth. So trees here can grow uh, very quickly. Uh, in fact, in Pacific Spirit Park, uh, there was a fire about 100 years ago. So there are almost no trees older than 100 years there. But there are a number of Douglas firs that are between one and one and a half meters in DBH and diameter at breast height. So this is an incredibly productive forest for those reasons. The main tree species here, the western hemlock, as you would expect, because that's what the zone is named for. So that's the climatic climax species through, species through the whole zone. But western red cedar is also a climax species, a species that you would expect here in very late successional or old growth forests. It's not the case through the whole range of the coastal western hemlock zone, so that's why it's not included in the name of the zone. But those are the two species that we would expect to find in very old forests in this zone that have not had, had a stand initiating disturbance in the recent past. Another really important tree species that we have here is Douglas fir. Douglas fir is funny, it's actually an early successional tree species, meaning it's a tree species that comes in right after a disturbance and it can grow very well in heavily disturbed areas. It grows very quickly and quickly establishes dominance in the early stages of development of a forest stand. Um, and there's lots of species like that, these early successional tree species that come in and grow very quickly. Uh, another one that we have in this area is red alder. The difference is that red alder usually only lives to maybe 70 to 100 years old, whereas Douglas fir can live much longer, 500, 1,000 years. So even though it's an early successional species, we could find an old growth stand here that was 800 years old, and there could still be a significant Douglas fir component in it. The, the thing to keep in mind though, is that if we were to find one of those stands and look around, if we looked around in the understory for saplings, for trees that, young trees that were growing in the understory, we wouldn't find any Douglas fir because on the coast, Douglas fir is a shade intolerant species, meaning it can't regenerate uh, under low light conditions. So those Douglas fir that you would see in that old growth forest, uh, we're growing there since the beginning of that stand when the stand was very open, but they will not regenerate in that stand. So over time, as they die from old age or small disturbances, they'll be replaced by other species, mostly western hemlock and western red cedar. As you might guess by the name, the coastal western hemlock zone is a coastal zone, so you'll find it on the coast of the mainland, as well as Vancouver Island, Haida Gwaii, and some other islands in the province. Its elevation range is from sea level up to about 700 meters. It varies depending on where you are, but it's a relatively low elevation zone. Uh, its precipitation is high, but there's a big range in, in that precipitation. So at the low end, like we have here, we're looking at maybe about a meter of precipitation a year up into the, the very wet areas of this zone might get up to four meters of precipitation a year. So quite a bit and relatively mild temperatures, uh, a long growing season. There may be some period of time where the temperature is below zero, it might get a little bit of snow, especially higher in that elevational range. But on the whole, most of the precipitation in this zone is going to fall in the form of rain. Uh, in the lower mainland, it's actually a little bit funny here. During the summer, a high pressure weather system kind of parks itself over the lower mainland and we tend to have relatively little precipitation. So most people think of this area as very rainy and over the course of a whole year it is very rainy, but we actually have a dry stretch during the summer in the lower mainland that can uh, get into an actual drought level. So that's a challenge that the trees here have to deal with. They are capable of making use of all of that water, but they also need to be able to weather uh, an annual drought during the summer.